Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take a clump of uh, deer hair, or I'm going to use a clip springer. Just want to explain this to you that the length of this clip springer here, or the deer hair, the further it is back to the tail, the less wiggle there is going to be in the tail. The tail is just going to carry with it's not going to swim side to side. The more the deer hair is, the less the deer hair is, the more swim or wiggle you're going to get into the tail. So I'm going to put it so it's just on to the just past the bend of the hook there. I don't mind having it not all aligned. That's okay. It gives you just a rough look. I'm going to put it on top. The minute you're going to tie it in, it wants to roll over. So you don't want that. You want to stop it with your finger from rolling over like that. But you want to sit right on top everywhere evenly spaced. Two soft loops, and you're gonna see it wants to swing like this as well. So I'm gonna stop that. I must keep everything in order here. By see, the minute I pull down, I'll make another two wraps here. Make sure you see I wiggle it so the thread goes through there. Pull it down hard, and then pull the hair back. Make three wraps at the back. I'm gonna take another clump of deer hair or whichever one you wanna use. You can even use bucktail, but bucktail don't spin nicely. I'm gonna put that in there. One, two wraps, and pull it down. Make another one. Okay. In this stage, pull it nicely up. Make sure it's all in order. And then I'm gonna tie in my wheat cart. The wheat cart. I'm using 60 pounds. You can use 60 pound fluorocarbon or 80 pound. Depends on what you wanna use. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to it found it's it's making a round part like this by itself. Okay, take my flat pliers, grab it nicely so it's in there nicely, push down, and then push it up. Okay, I'm going to show you now what that creates. So that's a bit long, so I'm going to cut that shorter, okay? Like so. So this is what you end up with. That's going to go underneath there. So again, I apply glue for extra strength. To the bottom side and some of my thread. And you can use super glue here to help you to get it into position. I'll try to do this without moving my uh, fly, just keeping it like this. Gonna grab it in there. Yeah. Point of illustration I don't really want to use. Change the fly. See, and that's where the super glue might help one. Check that is not skew. Just catch it first. Okay, once you've caught it, then you can adjust your adjust it correctly. Again, probably there's many different ways of doing this. Soft wraps, and then I pull it tight. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I'm gonna make sure it sits in line with the hook eye. Ach, with the with the hook tip and that's quite important guys this uh, piece of monofilament must sit straight in line with that hook eye okay right cool bananas okay then I'm going to take another clump of deer hair not too big a little bit smaller than the rest of them. I'm going to tie it in in front by using a pinch loop. Once, twice, again stop it from going to the front. Another tie in. Then I'm going to use, I'm using some of the big pen. And I'm going to push this deer here back. Just want to check that it's all sitting in its place so you don't roll around the hook. This is quite important, otherwise you're going to have a very unneat fly. 
push it back make sure all of it is back make two wraps to lock it no, man. so I don't want to catch any deer here in that okay applied blue and cut the thread so I'm gonna put glue onto my thread rather than onto the eye itself I'm gonna put quite a lot Then I'm gonna make a whip finish knot with my whip finish tool. I like using my tool, you can use your hand or whichever way is your favorite way of doing it. And check that you don't catch any deer air in there. I make two or three knots for extra strength again. great cut it off nicely push my deer hair up make sure I sit up nice okay next step is cutting off the deer hair head so guys what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut one side on the one side I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut this like this side this like this and that on this side and that side with an angle not only like this but also skew like that let me cut it one cut one cut okay let me quickly show you what I've done there is this I'm gonna keep on doing that okay do you see what I've done there all right I'll make sure that the area sits nice on top cut it again okay then I'm gonna cut there all right so now I've got my desired shape that I want so I'll tell you honestly some guys will say what I'm doing now is incorrect just want to check my camera it's in place yes there you go but this is what I do and I like doing this this works well for me some guys before they cut the deer hair they take the kettle they cook the kettle once the steam comes out of the tip of the kettle they put the head in front of the kettle and the hair will rise out it will steam up and it will stand proud and then they cut it it works very well you can also use your uh, blade to cut it and that also works very well what I do is I do it this way this works well for me I'm gonna use my lighter and I'm gonna burn this here okay if you're gonna burn this here yeah it's gonna take flame it's gonna catch fire so you need to blow it out I'm just doing this side not on top just the sides for now if you're gonna burn the body it's gonna melt you're gonna stuff the whole fly then I'm gonna do a little bit on top. You see how it caught fire there? Alright. Then I'm gonna use my scissors. I'm gonna scrape the burn parts off the burn hair. In the older days, you can get a haircut like this at your local barber. They burn your hair, they don't cut it. It was a preferred way by some of the older guys. And there you go it. And look at this nice shape and the nice smoothness of the head and that eye is nice and open then for the last part the last bit we need to make sure that this weed guard is in place so there you go it's right on top on top of the hook paint but it is too long where the bob of the fly is so I'm gonna push it down 
push down on that weed card and with a bar piece I'm cutting it off right there see so it's the same length of the barb and then I take my pliers again right on top I'm gonna measure it where the tip of the hook is see there where the tip of the hook is I'm gonna squash it down I'm gonna bend it towards the hook you want it to look like that okay then I'm gonna push it down and while you're fishing see like that so I'm pushing it I'm bending it like this okay and while you're fishing you're gonna have to push this guard down quite frequently so it sits nice and snug on top of there and there you have it your largemouth yellowfish fly baitfish pattern you can now use your own imagination you can even put you can put two flash flash abouts on top here or on the sides of the wing um, like I've done here to gold, gold and black works great, olive and red works great, don't put too much dirty water you can put some flash, clean water you don't want to put flash, you want to have it as pale as possible as it must disappear on the bottom ok, I hope this fly worked for you, thank you for sharing with me and thank you for watching my video please book a guided day with rapid hunter yellowfish safaris for largemouth yellowfish or you can do a fly tying session with myself, with my company Run Fish Flies. Have an awesome day, tight lines, and remember fish forward. Mm -hmm.